Hi, this is Michael at Notionwork, and in this video tutorial, I'm going to be showing you how to set up DNS mask on a DDWRT router. Now, you might be asking yourself, why would I need to have a local DNS server on my system? Well, the answer is, you might not. Um, if you only have one device, or if you only have a few devices, and you never find yourself having to type in IP addresses to access those machines, then you probably don't need a DNS server on your local network. However, if you have many devices or you find yourself having to type in IP addresses or if you've been using a host file on each of those machines to resolve names to IP addresses then you might want to look into using a DNS server because it will simplify that setup it will consolidate everything into one location and it will allow you to do a lot of other tricky awesome stuff too now for the purposes of this video tutorial I'm going to assume that you understand DNS, what IP address is, as well as how those work in consort with each other in order to create a very comprehensive and powerful system for mapping names to IP addresses. So let's go ahead here and visit the web interface for our router by typing in 192.168.1.1, which is the IP address of my router, and let's hit enter here and see what we get. And bam, here we go. Here's the web interface for our DDWRT router. Now the cool thing I'm going to demonstrate here is that I can also access this interface by typing in a name that I have associated with 192.168.1.1. So if we type in Notion Gate, hit enter, boom, it takes us to the same screen. To further illustrate that, I'll open up a new tab here and go to NotionGate.NotionWork. Dot LAN, which is my local domain. Boom! It will also take me to my router's web interface. Now, in order to set this all up, let's go to Setup tab here on the left hand corner. Type, hit that. I'm going to go in the Basic Setup tab. I'm going to scroll down here to Local DNS. This is going to be the first setting you're going to notice uh, if you're hunting around for settings to change in order to get this running. Now this is not necessary to have set to anything other than 0.0.0.0. The only reason why you would ever want to type in another IP address into these four boxes is if you had a server that was not running on your router, that was on a different machine on your network, and you wanted to use that uh, to resolve local DNS lookups. Now, scroll down here, and we're going to go to the most critical setting we have in order to ensure that DNS mask is used for DNS. And that is the use DNS mask for DNS options box. Let's check that and make sure that's checked. I also have here use DNS mask for DHCP checked. I use this because it makes assigning static IP addresses to devices and then using uh, automatically assigning names to those devices that I can then later have resolved to those IP addresses. It makes it much more seamless because DNS mask is both assigning uh, IP addresses with DHCP as well as managing DNS uh, lookups. So let's go ahead and look here at the static DNS one. What this is going to be is I have this set to my router's IP address that will ensure that all devices on my network will use my router as a DNS server locally and then it will then forward on anything it cannot resolve itself to these two other DNS servers both of them being Google's public DNS servers. I set those to be Google's public DNS servers because it, they are actually faster than my ISP, my internet service providers DNS servers. So let's go ahead and scroll back up here. Let's go to the services tab here, click on that. Uh, let's go then and make sure we're in the sub tab services. It's a little redundant, but uh, let's scroll down here and we're gonna make sure that used domain is set to LAN and wireless LAN. It will probably be set to WAN up here. Now that is not going to work for local DNS lookups because it will append the WAN domain. It will try to search for that device that you're trying to access on the WAN domain as opposed to your local domain. So we want to make sure that this is set to your local area network and your wireless local area network. Now in the LAN domain options uh, box here, we can specify a domain we want to use for our local area network. 
Now, this does not have to be set to anything. It could be set to absolutely nothing, and things would work just fine by typing in Notion gate, for instance. Type that in, it would work. Now, what we can do also is specify a local domain that we want used. So we could either leave this blank again, or we could, let's say, type in .lan. And so anything that we would type in, it would have to be Notion gate .lan and that would access my local router. Now, what we could also do though is add a subdomain to that top domain. Um, let's go ahead here and add notion work. So it could also be notionwork.land. It could be also notionwork.local. It can be anything really that you'd like here. Um, however, .local has some issues on some Unix machines and so I like .lan. Keeps it more straightforward, shorter and it doesn't have any problems with any machines that I know of. Now, so I've got mine set to notionwork.lan. So that would mean that I would have to, and in order to access my router, I would have to type in notiongate.notionwork.lan. However, I don't necessarily want to do that for everything. So what I have set down here in my additional DNS mask options box in the DNS mask pane of the services tab, um, I've got expand-hosts on its own line, separate line. Um, now what this option does is it says to DNS mask, I want you to take any sort of request that doesn't have a local domain attached to it, so like just a name, like Notion Gate, and I want you to then use the domain notionwork.lan with it. So that if I type in Notion Gate, that will work. If I type in notiongate.notionwork.lan, that will also work. So that's a key setting there in order to enable that functionality. Now what you also see I have set here in my additional DNS max options box is a cache size. Now what cache size is, is it specifies to DNS mask, well how many results of external DNS requests do I want to store? So if I go to google.com and it searches my local DNS server, the DNS mask server for google.com and it comes up with nothing, which it shouldn't because I haven't specified anything in there. It will then go out to my other static DNS servers that I've specified in the other pane in the basic setup tab. And then it will say, hey, guess what? I got the result from that. I'm gonna go ahead and store that so that next time I don't have to ask those external DNS servers for that result. That will significantly speed up your internet uh, requests because as opposed to, again, contacting external DNS servers out on the internet. Um, you will then just be talking to your router and retrieving cached results. So I've got mine set to 10,000, which is quite a large number. Um, if you have 64 megabytes of RAM on your router, that should be fine. Um, if you have less than that, I would probably set it to 1,000. <clears throat> if you have less than that, maybe 100. So you know, start off conservatively because this is going to be stored in the RAM. And so you don't want to make it too large and then have many, many two sites uh, basically stored in your RAM and then that would in actually slow down your router and cause problems. So start gradually, maybe at 100, add a, you know, another zero, bump it to 2,000, 10,000, see where you go from there. All right, so now what we wanna do is we wanna be able to specify names that we want resolved to IP addresses. Now how, the way we do that is we type in address equals without any spaces forward slash the host name or the fully qualified domain name so for instance since i have a local domain set up notionwork.lan down here i could type in oh well i want um let's say venus let's say i have a new computer and i want it to be on the notionwork.lan domain another forward slash that ends that fully qualified domain that it will resolve to the following IP address. So I'm gonna type in the IP address that I would like resolved, it resolved to, which will be 192.168.1.103 and end that with a forward slash. So that's how you specify addresses that you want mapped and resolved from this name to this IP address. You can also specify multiple um, names that you would like resolved to the same IP address. Um, 
as well as assign static leases within this configuration box as well. And when you assign static leases with D uh, DNS mask, it will automatically make those names that you have specified available to be resolved to the IP addresses that you're statically assigning to it. So in order to fully illustrate that, um, there are two different ways of doing that. You can either use the DNS mask options box down here to do that, um, or what you can do is assign static leases up here in the more friendly UI way of doing it. Um, you get less control. However, if you use DHCPD as your DHCP server, um, then it will uh, pick these up up here. However, it won't pick those up. Any sort of static leases that you specify down here with the DHCP host option um, down there uh, because it's that's going to be a DNS mask specific. So I've got them set up up here just because I really don't need a huge amount of fine grain control over it. If you did, I would recommend then doing it down here in the DNS masks options box. However, if you don't need a whole bunch of control and if you just want to assign some static leases to the machines and then ensure that they can be accessible with a host name, then that, this is what I would recommend using up here. So how we do this is we just hit add. That will add a, another box to us for uh, to this uh, little pane here that we can then use. Let's type in a fake uh, MAC address here. And um, then we can go ahead and, oh, I forgot, there we go. All right, and then we can type in a host name. Let's say we want Venus. And then we type in an IP address that we want statically assigned to that device. And then we have the client lease time, which you can either specify to a certain amount of minutes. If you leave it blank, it will be infinite. Um, so it will never expire. That's just fine for all these because they're static leases anyway. and I don't mind if they never expire. So now because we are using DNS mask for DHCP, again, we can verify that going to the setup tab here, scrolling down and looking at the use D DNS mask for DHCP options, make sure that's checked. Because we're using that, since we're specifying uh, these devices, these MAC addresses, host names and IP addresses up here, it will automatically make those accessible to us for DNS resolution. So if I were to type in Mars up here, Mars, and hit enter, it won't go to it just because I don't have a server set up on port 80. But if I did have a server set up on my local machine, this is actually Mars is my laptop here that I'm broadcasting with. Um, if I had that set up, then it would actually access my uh, server on this computer. However, let's, we can just show you by going to Notion Gate and it'll go there. Now you'll notice I don't have Notion Gate set up here on the static leases. I don't have it set up here in my additional DNS mask options. Now that's because Notion Gate is the host name for this router and that's actually set up uh, right here in the host name options field in the optional settings. Now the reason why that's accessible via DNS mask is because that is set into your uh, your host file on your router and DNS mask op, uh, by default uses your host file to resolve DNS options. So if you had a host file that was really awesome, you had it all set up um, on one of your development machines, what you could do is run DNS mask on that development machine. It would use that host file to resolve DNS lookups pointed at that machine and all you would have to do is specify on each of your computers to use that DNS server uh, for local lookups or on your router this is the case where you would use it you would type in that IP address into the local DNS options box here and then that would forward all DNS lookups for local DNS lookups uh, to that server so you could do that too but since I like just kind of this integrated approach. Since I can run DNS mask just fine on my router, I might as well. So again, we have options set up here, MAC addresses, host names, IP addresses. Those will resolve to those addresses and they will also assign be assigned static IP addresses. So 
This is going to assign it statically to this MAC address. It's also going to say, okay, this host name will then resolve to this IP address. Boom, simple. You could also do the same thing down here by either specifying DHCP hosts. I'm not going to go into specifically doing that in this video tutorial. I will in another one. So uh, that would be how you would assign a sp uh, static IP address. Or if you just had some device that already had a static IP address, um, then you could assign it just a name to resolve to an IP address by typing in that name, say Venus dot the local domain, which in my case is notionwork dot lan slash forward slash the IP address, which would be 192.168.1.103. All right. So once you've got all that stuff set up, you want to go ahead here and hit apply settings. In fact, that's a really good key thing for us in the other screen is that any changes that you make, you're going to want to save. So when you changed your static DNS one option here and you check checked and made sure DNS mask for DNS is enabled, you want to hit save. That will save those configuration settings. It won't apply them yet, but that way we can ensure that those options are saved so that then when we apply them eventually using the apply settings button, um, all those changes that we've made will have been saved and then applied. So now um, I believe that is just about it. Um, I basically am going to show you how to flush your DNS uh, settings, which most easily is done by just disconnecting from your wireless network and then reconnecting to it. So if I turn off my Wi-Fi here, wait five to 10 seconds, go up here then again and enable it, turn on Wi-Fi, wait for it to connect, and then go ahead and test it by going to Notion Gate. And then boom, yeah, so that's all working just fine. So that's how you would um, flush your DNS cache. You can also restart your computer or run a series of functions, which I will have linked in the video description that you can also run on the command line, either if you're on Windows, if you're on a Mac system, or if you're on a Linux system. You can run those commands and it will flush your DNS cache without having to uh, restart your system. So, and that's key because if those settings are misaligned with the settings that you have on your router, then when you request websites, when you request um, local devices that you want resolved to IP addresses, those will not work unless all of those settings are in sync with your router. And so flushing your DNS cache or disconnecting from your wireless or wired connection and then reconnecting should do it. Or if in doubt, just restarting your system. So that's just about it. Um, if you have any questions or comments, feel free to let me know. And in the next couple of weeks, I'll have a couple of video tutorials up pretty soon covering the DNS system, how IP addresses work out, along with how to provision and configure uh, physical machines along with virtual ones. Um, so that's all gonna be pretty, some pretty fun stuff. So keep your eyes peeled for that and um, it's a pleasure. This is uh, Michael from Notionwork. And again, if you guys have any questions, feel free to drop me a line. Have a great day.